Chat is presented by Botano. The game starts now. Here are your hosts, Brent Wallace, Jason York, and Bobby Ryan. Settles it down, played it off, side of the net, scores! Josh Norris in his first game back, a power play goal! Welcome back, Josh Norris! Mm. Drink it in, it always goes down smooth. so good you gotta warn people when that's coming (laughs) welcome to the show everybody Uh, alongside jason york and uh, bobby ryan uh, presented as always by botano Uh, also we're going to talk about wendy's joining the show uh, a little bit later uh york i didn't mean to cut you off but yes whenever there's an anchorman quote it always elevates the show just a little bit more so good so good we're going to talk movies later, aren't we? Well, so that's also part of the reason why we put it in the show is that uh, we will be discussing our top five comedies. Meaning, if it's on the TV, would you stop to watch it? Is basically what we're trying to get at. What? Not the well, you never said list. that. You didn't say that. That's totally different. No, it's not. I, you're going to tell me the five that you submitted. You're not going to stop and watch on TV. Yes, I would. But like, for example, if airplane anytime. <laughs> airplanes on television i will stop and watch it just because so, it's it's such great stupid comedy okay well then you know what i when still have pick... seen this <laughs> oh it's great bob it's got just it's 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 old but some of the jokes still carry in today's time like it's 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 corny i guess corny would corny be the correct phrase wally for airplane no classic classic corny well, there's a it's big classic, difference between those two guys. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, classic yeah. comedy. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. all, right. all comedies are corny. Let's get, to, let's be real. And, 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 and a bunch of the jokes, a bunch of the jokes, the politically correct people would not like them that are in this movie. Yeah. Cool. It's a, it may be a little dated. Yeah. So you'd like it, Bob. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, we'll get to that. Uh, but yeah. first, we got some hockey to discuss. And that's, uh, should we start with the game last night? Is the Senators now three wins in a row they sit atop uh the atlantic division they looked really good and i know they dismantled washington which we all say is a a little bit of a struggle however they're still in the national hockey league meaning they can beat you in any given night um and josh norris returned as we know and we will get to a little bit more of josh norris in a sec same with a few other players but first guys give me your thoughts just on the game itself and uh, bob i want to start with you you know <sighs> I, I live tweeted a lot of the game and then it got to be four one. And this is where I turned the game off because I hate, I hate dissecting a game when it's four to one or five to one, because the game and York, you can tell me um, if you disagree, but I think that's where the game changes a ton. Guys are going to score that shouldn't score. Um, teams are going to press. So it just changes everything. So I turned it off because I thought it was, one, I thought it was a very, very good game by the auto centers. I didn't like the first period. Uh, I thought that they were, I thought that they chased most of the first period, didn't you? Um, I, and you can weigh in on that after, I guess. But I, I, I love the power play. I love what Josh Norris did. I thought Drake Batherson again was phenomenal. Um, and when we break down Josh's goals, we can talk about Drake. But I thought it was a great home win. I will just go out and say this: Washington's pitiful. <laughs> you took the words out of my mouth. Pitiful. <laughs> Like TJ Oshi looked great. Yeah, he's a good player. Um, yeah, he still has it. He still has yeah. it. Yeah, he had but eight th- shots on goal. I think no. something eight or seven. Yeah, and he had four or five like unbelievable moves to set things up. I just, um, I, I think that he's going to be a guy that gets moved to the deadline. So if we have to mm-hmm. do a deadline watch, I think that TJ Oshi is going to be very high on that list. But that's a really bad hockey team, um, and there's no way to sugarcoat that. I don't think. Do you? They're horrendous. They're horrendous. <laughs> well, you didn't try They're horrendous, to. Okay. But, but here's the thing, and, and I, I'm not going to take anything away from the Ottawa Senators, Bob, because you know this as well as I do. Sometimes it's tough to beat a really bad team because they hang around, and this is the difference where Ottawa's at right now. They are so confident. They are going into games expecting to win. And when they get opportunities, they don't miss. Like. Like yeah. you've got you've got sure-handed guys around the net now. Like you got to give Tarasenko full marks. Uh, 
great hands on that goal. Like gets a chance, puts it in. Norris gets two opportunities, puts it in. Um, the chemistry, I know we could get into this a little more. The chemistry between Josh Norris and Drake Batherson is off the charts. Uh, and I'm going to give Kubalik some love too. He didn't get a point on that one goal, but he made the whole, he, yeah. he Drake made the initial hit, but then the D got it. And Kubalik, and this is what kind of bugs me when people label Kubalik a one dimensional player. The one dimensional player is someone that can only score. And if he's not scoring, he's not doing anything else. Right now, Kubalik is not scoring, but he's finding out a way to contribute. And that's being hard on the forecheck. And that's going to carry a lot of weight with the coaching staff. Because one thing I know about this coaching staff, they love guys to get after it on the forecheck and turn pucks over. That goal doesn't happen unless Kubalik turns that puck over and goes in and makes a real nice check. Puck's there for Drake. Drake makes it like eyes in the back of his head, puts it on a tee again for Josh. But I like that line. So I think it's a matter of time before if Kubalik stays with those two guys, he'll start getting some points. He'll start getting some goals. Yeah. But, um, you know, like I said, horrible team, the Washington Capitals, but you still got to beat the bad ones. And, uh, and that's when, you know, you're becoming a good team when you, you win the winnables and that's what they did last night. And, uh, I think we're all four and oh, by the way, fellas, we, we, we predicted boys are hot. Like we should be, we should be throwing down some, uh, some pesos here where we could be making some serious cash. But there, uh, yeah. I, well, actually, I was so bad at one point last year. I was thinking about betting the ponies, uh, just <laughs> trying to get it back up uh, into the mix. But yeah. um, uh, okay. I, I knew we were going to talk about Josh's game, so I didn't go out on you know yeah. any kind of tangent before I said that his second goal in particular, the first one's a power play goal, which is an amazing play, um, mm -hmm. and we can run through that. But the second goal was made first by Drake, which were you know just got a little cut off there. He set, he didn't separate, but what he did was made contact. Kubalik goes in and separates and opens up. A, there you go. And that's a great hit. And here you go. Great right take a guy right out of the play there. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, Josh, like I was a shooter too. Josh puts himself in a position to take a perfect one timer. And I love, like, there was, when you're, when you're talking about a shoulder, um, and for me, it was hands. When you're talking about shoulder and hands injuries, like I lost the ability to do that, to take that shot that tells me a lot of good things about where the stability of his shoulder is to just sweep that puck right into the top left or top right corner, excuse me, um, yeah. of that game. I thought he looked a little hesitant early too. I thought he took a hit from Ovi in the first period where he didn't get the puck out that it, you have to live with those growing pains when a guy is coming back from injury. But at the same time, I thought he, I, I thought he asserted himself well after he settled down. Yeah. Yeah. And just giving that line. Now they're a scoring threat with Josh on that line. And you got, you got three legitimate lines that can score the Tarasenko line with, with Ridley Gray got another good performance. Joseph had another good performance and people were not even talking about the quiet night for Tim Sutzla, who, Oh, by the way, three assists. Mm. <laughs> That's not a yeah. bad uh, Claude Giroux quiet night for Brady, but this is a great sign when your best line doesn't have to be great because you're getting the second and third line to chip in and uh, another good in the game for uh, for work share trade. Like just just getting pucks deep, grinding, killing penalties. Like he's been a nice little addition there and cast a drop on the gloves. And that's what he has to do. He has to do that from time to time. And he did a great job. That, that, you stand up. Doesn't matter. You win, you lose. You show up. And he showed yep. up. Uh, just a sec. There's lots of stuff in the chat. One, we will get to McEwen on waivers. Two, we'll discuss Shane Pinto. I didn't uh, see that. Uh, yeah, Zach McEwen placed on waivers at 2 p.m. So wow. Okay, um, so no wonder I missed it. <laughs> this is, <laughs> that makes me feel better because I was like, I actually paid attention today, guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so wow. we'll get to that. Plus, there's a few more things. Anyway, uh, but we're moving on. One is, you guys want we'll talk about some specific players, and that includes uh, Josh Norris, obviously. So time now. Uh, for the DoorDash, hot and cold. And so for DoorDash, uh, just basically, just order up DoorDash. Download the app. Uh, with restaurants, groceries, pharmacies, bakeries, flower shops, and more. Uh, bakeries being Bobby's favorite. DoorDash has everything you need to make the holiday special. Ordering is easy. Just open the DoorDash app. Choose what you want from where you want. And your items will be left safely outside your door with our default contactless delivery setting. 
Uh, don't worry about cooking dinner or running to the store. Let it all come to you with DoorDash. Uh, for a limited time now, our listeners can get 25% off and zero delivery fees on their first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code NATION25, all uppercase letters, by the way. Uh, 25% off, $10 value, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app and use NATION25. Don't forget, NATION25 for 25% off your first order. Offer valid, Bobby, in Canada only. Uh, yep, subject thanks, to change. Guys. Uh, terms apply so you can you can order me anything you want um now time for the hot or cold and bob i think this one's pretty easy and the reason i say that is you sent out a tweet last night after josh scored his second goal in which you said if he gets a chance to bury a hat trick in the open net norris is going to hear from me calling for the puck from here in nashville which uh <laughs> do you want to do you want to set that up to so people understand what you're talking about? I think the reaction on Twitter is great because a lot of people just automatically knew where I was going with that, <laughs> uh, which I love. But um, we'll never talk about we'll never talk about it enough because I think it was one of the funniest stories I actually have in pro hockey where I have a chance to score a hat trick in my first game back after going through um, you know a, a horrible year uh, for myself. And Brady sends one to the middle and I get an open netter to seal a deal for, I think it was a five, two win. Uh, it was third goal of the game. And Josh is calling for the puck with a stick <laughs> up. And that is a goal scorers MO and I'm not mad about it. So uh, um, I was watching the game last night and I think somebody tweeted like the last time a number nine did this, it was a big night and like, you know, different circumstances for sure. Uh, yeah. But I was rooting for him. All. I I I love Josh. I think the world of him as a as a as a young kid that I got to play with for a little bit of time. I was I was so pumped. So I thought it was a great tweet because uh, if he had scored the hat trick, I was going to be like, the only thing you didn't do is be as good looking as the last number nine. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> so I I was pumped, and he is yeah. leading that into our DoorDash um, hot or cold. I'm wasn't torn on it when you asked me but there was a lot of players i kind of wanted to put in yes, yes. but i'm gonna That's give the it a problem I'm, yes yeah. yeah a lot of players are playing very good hockey right now but i'm gonna take josh norris as my hot player of the day or the week or, yeah you have to Dude. you have to give it to him when was his last game fellas how long ago was it since his last G game over 200 and 270 days i'm gonna say january yeah. right january 21st i think it was yeah, yeah. yeah. not only that yeah. don't forget i mean he played five games since september of last year oh. uh eight games i'm sorry Hold you know on. what i just, just pot two on my uh i haven't played in almost a year a pot two <laughs> in my debut <laughs> like Pretty nothing you know what like i the love reaction the so bobby before like as a goal scorer uh it everybody talked about how long it takes or it takes time to get back and get the rhythm i just thought how quick his hands were on that power play goal i know mm -hmm. he's in the crease but the reaction time for him is like he's been doing that all season long. Well, you know what? He actually, on that goal, like he outbattled somebody to win that puck. Um, I think it was Kuznetsov, if I'm not mistaken, on that goal that had him on the back door that had a chance to like to win the battle. And I know it's a backhand versus forehand goal. So you see it coming down. That is Kuznetsov, 92. Like he, he outpowered him. He got underneath of his stick and won that battle. So that just tells me good things about that. The only thing that I think I was worried about, Josh, was that he would come back and not score for five, six games because that can very easily mm. turn into 11. And right. to, I mean, he threw two up. It's fine. <laughs> it's not a bad night. Pretty good. Like yeah, pretty good night. Pretty good night. Jo um, Josh yeah. Norris holds the franchise record for players who played 100 games or more in shooting percentage at 18.5%. I don't think we appreciate how good a goal scorer Josh Norris is. To, I know he had 35 goals, but I yeah. think that we see Stutzla and Brady and Giroux and Tarasenko. And I, he might be I'm, outside of Tarasenko. I think he's the best goal scorer on the team. Yeah. Well, this is the thing yeah. too. Everybody was so worried. Oh, we can't get rid of Debrinket. Where are the goals going to come from? Well, you got a guy that got 35 for you. And that was like, he hasn't been in the league that long. Nope. Chances are you can do it again. Right. hundred percent. Yeah. I, I, and I was just super pumped for him to be back because we all know him personally. And as a person, he's just a really, really good yeah. guy. Like just, I, I think he's a fantastic individual. So you just want to cheer for those people. Like you really do. Bobby, you've, you've sat out a lot. You haven't sat out 270 straight days of hockey and tried no. to fight your way through a, a shoulder injury. No, uh, I tried to. Uh, yeah. I, 
I think a lot of players will tell you that whether the injury in Yorkie can attest to this for a shoulder, you come back too early all the time. Um, mm -hmm. I, I love the fact that he stayed committed to the process. Probably wanted to come back a week ago, but who cares? You miss a couple games. You come right back in. You score two in your home opener for yourself, not the team home opener, but you, you do everything right. You get yourself there and you get rewarded for it. So, um, and I, I actually, you know, he's, he's a Michigan kid where, you know, the American kids kind of stick together when you all play in Canada. I've been rooting for him since day one. I thought he was the biggest piece of that trade. Um, mm. And I, I thought he would be. And I, I think he's proving to be up there in that trade for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to argue with Tim Stutzla, but I, I absolutely love Josh's game. I think he's arguably the best goal scorer shooter that they have. Oh, well, were you surprised they put him right back on the first power play? No, I don't think you can argue with what he's done there. So, no. Um, well, he's got to be there. Know. He has to be, right? Hey, Bob, if you go, can Gavin go back to that little video of, of, of Josh's goal there? Which one? Put that back. Power play we'll goal? Go, the, the first one. Watch this. So, stop it right there. Are you able to stop that? The thing, and this is why you have to have a, a left-handed shooter there for one, but the chemistry between Batherson and Josh Norris is unbelievable. And Brady being in the middle there, this is so hard to defend because as soon as that puck goes down um, to the goal line to uh, to Josh on that particular play, you got to respect Kachuk who pushes out. It could be a bumper to Kachuk for a shot. And that's how this, that's how this happens because he comes out and takes Kachuk and it's a slide across to Josh. There are so many options with this power play. And that's why Drake has to be on it too, because you need the right shot. You have to have the right shot. Um, and that's how it works. And, and now you got, you get Sanderson, Stutzla. Stutzla can come on his left side. He's a shooting threat. This sends power play is ridiculous, uh, Bob, how many options there are. That's why it was so good last year. But I think it's going to be even better with Norris because he's it's everybody is in the exact spots to have the best success for a unit of five. That's what I like about them. I think about Drake. He always has the option. Okay, Brady pushes out to be that bumper shooter, but Brady's six foot three, two twenty. Somebody's going out to him, and that just opens that backdoor lane up. And if you don't cover him, guess what? Brady's. Brady might be that big, tall guy that's imposing in front of the net, but he's absolutely got some hands in tight, and he can make things yeah. happen. So, yeah, I I love their setup right now. I really do. It's really good. It's it's yeah. it's great. So you, you got to give the uh, the Davis Payne runs the power play. He's uh, he's he's done a nice job with that group. I'd agree. He's got he's got a lot of help. Well, he's got Josh Norris and Brady Kachuk and Drake Batherson mm -hmm. and Tim Stutzla and yeah. now Jake Sanderson to work with. And we haven't talked and, about and this, you know what? Way. He's worked with a lot of those guys long enough now. Like some guys were there when I was there learning how to be um, power play guys. But now they can go into a meeting and say, hey, we're seeing this differently. And yeah, I, what I like about Painter is he is absolutely open to suggestion. Um, yeah. So I, I, I think they're going to be I think they're going to be absolutely lethal as a group for a long period you know of time. You know your power play is pretty sick when you got when you roll Claude Giroud on your second unit. Well, that's why I was like <laughs> Tarasenko, Thomas Shabbat, Claude Thomas Giroud, Shabbat. Tarasenko, yeah. like and, and Chikrin, oh. who's got a pretty good yeah. one timer. Yeah, like and I and I hate have. I'm not a big fan of two units, but if you're gonna have two units, my God, might as, as well be those two. Might as well be those two. So it's an <laughs> it's an embarrassment of riches that you can roll it on either power play, which is. And two totally different looks, too. Two totally different looks. But yeah, uh, no, it's yeah. it's been it's been impressive. Uh, all right, Yorkie, time for your hot or oh. cold player. What do we got? Do we have my tweet from last night? And I tweeted this out during the game, and I and I will stand by this tweet. <laughs> Jake Sanderson is going to get Norris Trophy votes this year. Book it. Book it. Votes. He's going to get votes. I'm okay. not saying he's going to win the Norris Trophy. I'm going to say he's going to get some votes. If but there's there's a caveat here, he has to remain on the first power play. Which, if he does, I, I think he will because you have to put up points if you're going to get Norris votes, uh, and usually you have to put up minimum of over probably fifty or sixty. But it's the offense is unbelievable. Um, 
he's really starting to come along for him. But for me, he's the prototypical modern day defenseman. Because if you're a modern day defenseman, that's going to be a Norris type guy, you have to be able to defend. And people talk a lot about Kale McCarr, uh, who I think is the best defenseman in the league right now. He can defend. Like, did you see mm-hmm. that hit? He, th- he blew somebody up the other night with a huge hit. Um, but when I watch Sanderson play, the way he defends, how hard he defends, nothing's easy against him when you play. Um, last night in particular, the one play, he was out of the play. He used his skating to track back. And instead of being on the wrong side of the forward, he was able to skate, get in front of him, and push him out of the bad ice. And now he's starting to hold on the pucks. He just doesn't get the puck and throw it up the boards. He might do an escape move and then make the better pass. He's holding into the puck and more often the offensive zone. So that's why you're seeing more offensive looks happen. That's what the best players in the NHL can do. The ability to take the puck, hold on to it and extend the plays. Like he's to already be doing that in your second year in the league as a defenseman is crazy. It's unheard of. Like even guys, the best guys in the league that play on defense, don't do some of the things he's doing right now. So he's my guy for being hot uh, for his all around game. Points are great. He's got lots of points. He got the, get the goal and he got the assist, but I'm just so impressed of his overall game. It's been, uh, it's been hot right from day one. People in Buffalo would argue that uh, it's not even, it's not, it's not even close right now between, between (laughs) Owen, Owen power and Sanderson, by the way, it's not close. I, not close. I can't disagree with that. I think I think it's not I think close. Maybe one of the best skaters I've ever gotten to watch. It's not really? it, so I played against his dad, Bob. Uh his dad could skate like the wind and he was a winger. They have the same stride. It's just so like Effortless. his dad was his dad was so fast. But when you watch Sanderson, like his head's up the whole time. Like when he's on the when he's now the way he's walking the line. Yeah. Even the play like last night when he set Zub's goal up, took the puck mm-hmm. all the way around. Um, so, you know, he's still going to make mistakes, but I, I I just love the courage he plays with, that he's not afraid now to try things. And holy shit, can, can he skate? So <laughs> I'm not saying he's going to win the Norris. He's going to get, because usually you have to get, you got to pay your dues. The, most voters won't watch the games. They'll just go off um, stats and stats. stuff yeah. and uh, ask their buddy. But he'll uh, he'll be he'll be getting some votes this year if, if this continues for sure. You're just not allowed to ask buddies that have fans in Buffalo. <laughs> <laughs> there's there's no chance he's getting a vote out of Buffalo. There's no yeah. chance. I uh, uh, I I do I I'll before we move on. I think he's one of the best. And, and I think the other one that I've watched and I got to play with is Chabby. Chabby makes moves with his feet that he was good. Last night. Ang- yeah, he was phenomenal last night, but he changes angles and he makes guys come at him differently. And Jake has that. And I think he might be even a little bit better at it. And that's not to take anything with Chabby. I mean, they're, yeah, the two phenomenal defensemen. The only guy that I've thought out Chikrin wasn't great last night defensively yeah. to me. Um, he didn't get beat, but he just looked out of place a few times, but then he gets the puck and makes a five foot pass that changes the entire breakout, which is, you know, his, I guess his role or whatever you want to call it. But I, I didn't think he was great defensively last night. Yeah. I didn't watch, I didn't have the trick, uh, goggles on. So I wasn't watching a lot yeah. and I was guilty <laughs> of watching two games as my son who plays for Western U I'm watching him on the live stream. And then mm-hmm. I'd watch the Sens who I had taped and it was working out where I could watch the Western period. Then I go back and there might've been a little uh, fast forwarding on some of the Sens uh, things, but yeah, I didn't notice. I didn't, I didn't really, but the thing I did notice Bob was how well Shabbat played. I, I yeah. He, phenomenal. Uh, that was his best, yeah. that was his best, that was his best game of the year. Yeah. I'd best agree with that. Yeah. yeah. By, by yeah. far. Do you think it matters to him about being taken off the first power play unit? Uh, Bob, you know, him better than I do. I was going to say yes. Um, yeah, I do. I think it bothers him internally. What I like about Chabby is, and, I, and I've gotten to know him, um, he is a team first guy. Um, yeah. And you can't say that about a lot of guys. He is an absolute team first guy. So if that team is telling him right now, Sanderson's our better option, Chabby will accept it, but he will also be pissed about it internally. And I, I think that's yeah. a great problem to have for, for it, me it, anyway. And also too, it's not like you're on the second unit with guys that aren't 
like you're out there with you're not Drew. power killers. <laughs> you got Drew, you got Tarasenko, yeah. you got Chikrin, and uh is it uh who's who's the other option on there right now? I'm forgetting somebody. Did you say Tarasenko? Yeah, Tarasenko, Drew, Chikrin, uh um, Shabby. Yeah, we're missing one forward. Is it Kubelik? Uh, is it Ridley Greg or Kubelik? I think it's Kubelik. I think it's Kubelik. I believe well, that, that's going to be that's going to that's going to be Pinto when he comes back. He'll be your right shot. He'll be your right shot option when he comes back on that unit. Yep, we're not allowed to talk about that today. <laughs> they won. No? <laughs> Gotta let that one slide today. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but there, I've seen a couple people now say, "Where's all the Tarasenko hate or whatever?" Um, just we all we did was talk about him playing in game one, which wasn't very good. But I think since game one, he's been very very good. In fact, hey. we picked him as our hot performer. Uh, I think after the second game, I, I, I did. He, Bob did. And here's the thing. We're just honest on this show. He wasn't good in Carolina. He wasn't good, but I said, it's one game. He's getting used to a new team. And I, I, I said, it's unfair to judge a player after one bad game. Like, come on. And, and they played Carolina who I think is the team to beat. And let's see, it's, 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 it's a long season, but right now, yep. He's playing good, and you give credit where credit's due. He's doing exactly what he was brought in to do. Score goals, secondary scoring, um, making plays. Very underrated playmaker, by the way. Like, he's a good passer. And he's, yeah, he, he moves the tell. puck. Yeah. Hey, like, come on. He's won a Stanley Cup. He's been in the league, gets the puck on his stick. There's no panic. You can tell the guy's seen a few things in the league. He knows what to do. And uh, he's he's a way better fit. I'll put it this way. He's a way better fit on this team than Dabrinkit was because Agreed. he doesn't, he doesn't, ca- he doesn't care if he's the second line left winger. Like he doesn't, he's already won a cop. He's, he doesn't, he's, he's, he knows who he is, where he is in his career right now. And he's still a good player where you could tell with Dabrinkit, he wanted to be on, he wanted to be on the first line. And, uh, and that's, that can be a problem. I, uh, I think but- a great example is what, you brought him in to do is exactly what he did last night. He pulled the puck from backhand to forehand that was wobbling. Not a great pass, but he made, and he put that thing under the bar and got to go down the handshake line. That's exactly what Vladimir (laughs) Zemberis is supposed to do. That's it. And he did it perfectly in that situation last night. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Uh, Not everybody is having a fun time playing in Ottawa, however. Uh, As we get to that, Oh, uh, Bobby, uh, it's your turn because you've had a couple shows off now to bring us uh, our good friends at BEI. Oh, I'm back. OK, thank you, guys. <laughs> well, thanks to our friends at BEI, heavy civil general contractors in the Ottawa Valley, helping to shape the Ottawa Valley. Uh, and when planning your next project, consider them for your aggregate supply needs. You can find them at bonashareexcavating.com. Or get a hold of them at 613-432-1120 for all things equipment rentals, haulage and floating, and concrete formwork. Um, as always, though, please slow down at construction zones and free hockey Fridays. Oh, yeah, I think it's back. No, okay, it's it back. back? It's all right. Back. Yeah. I think it's back. Yeah. Nailed it. Uh, all right. So uh, Zach McEwen, as we said earlier, placed on waivers today. Now, before everybody gets excited, Zach McEwen makes seven hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. That does not clear up enough money for Shane Pinto. So, this move, while it frees up cash, if you will, if he doesn't get claimed or if he goes to the minors, uh, isn't the move that's going to bring in Shane Pinto. Uh, but I'm not sure that there's much of a surprise in this move, Yorkie. I was surprised. That, that, that it's happened so quick because it, like you said, it, it doesn't, it doesn't free up any money to, to sign Pinto. Right. Well, but, but it I, frees up money if there's yeah. an injury and they've got to call people up. Yeah. Or yeah. And, and here's yeah, the thing. And this this is the, dollars in cap space. And this is the beauty of, of Steve Stalos now being running the Ottawa senators. Like he didn't sign Zach McEwen. So he can come to in a and three say, year, Two point three two five million dollar contract, by the yeah, way. Yeah, and and he can come in because it's a clean slate and and make a change if he wants. Where you would have probably been more reluctant and probably wouldn't have happened if you didn't have the hockey ops department the way it is now, where you have a chain of command. So yeah, like I obviously something in camp. Uh, 
he had the injury and like I said, didn't have a great camp and now he's on waivers and well, I'll be interested to see what happens. So, well, so uh, people are mentioning this. And I was going to get to it is if Artem Zub is out now, they could do an emergency call up and that would allow them to be over the cap. Uh, but if Zub is out for any kind of extended period, and we won't know this until probably yeah. Friday afternoon at the earliest because they want to save money on cap, is it could be for Zub if he's out for an extended period. That would be the thing I would see. Oh, yeah. Or Brandstrom. I, but I think Brandstrom came back and played. He at one point yeah. was. Yeah. Was but, Zub, uh, did we ever get, did we ever, did that ever get clarified? Was it his jaw or his ear with Zub? Has it been, I don't know the been, answer. Yeah, upper body, Yorkie. Upper body. Upper body. I, tell you what, really Bob, high you ever, upper body. Have you yeah. ever got your ear sliced? No. You know what I Man, actually remember it hurts. when it hurts. Um, Ryan Dezingle got his and his ear looked like mashed potatoes. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen. And he's like, yeah, I can't function. Like I can't, I can't actually have a conversation. I can't skate because the wind would hurt it so bad. He said it was the worst injury that he had ever had. It's brutal. I I, w I was playing junior hockey in Kitchener, and I went in, hugged the boards to keep a puck in, and the D went high off the glass, right off my ear, and my friggin' ear just exploded. I had to get zippers all. One and and it, you know when they, you get the stitches, they're gonna stick the needles in your ear, and then you get stitched up. That thing hurt for like three weeks. It was brutal. Oh, I can imagine. Should, that's hey, people makes fun of Sid and Malkin for the ear guards, but maybe they're on to something. I sliced the bottom of my ear when I was like six or seven and it needed stitches and all this stuff. It was, but they wrapped it like a Van Gogh. I look like Van Gogh going to school the next day. The whole ear is covered. <laughs> the big ear white, patch going? Big, and big, big white gauze around my whole entire head. Yeah. It was a mess. They put the cone on too. <laughs> I didn't get the cone, but I was like, damn, this is a mess. Anyway, how old, how old were you? How old were you? Six or seven, I think. Yeah. Oh, wow. And that's back when you were allowed to bully, too. You must have got it bad at school. <laughs> <laughs> Only you would have done that. Everybody else Larry was nice Brooks. to me. Uh, was it, so, was so, it Larry so, Brooks in New York when Tortorella said that? Yeah. 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 What a, what a yeah. great one-liner. <laughs> poor, poor, I, I don't know how, if I would have enjoyed a full year of uh, John Tortorella's scrums, though. No. Why not? Because Actually, you're asking a lot of the too. same questions. Right. Like if you lose 50 games or 40 games, you're going to be asking like what went wrong or whatever. And Torts doesn't always like to answer what went wrong. After a while, you know that <laughs> it's going to get confrontational. Yeah, that's all. If you win you 80 games, like everything's fine. Hey, I love Torts. He just tells it how it is. Yes, he could, but hilarious. he could do it differently. I, I love when I love when they used to have him on the panel on on that was a TSN that brought him on. Yeah, he yeah. was outrageous. Like it, he's very something. good. Oh, anyway, so grumpy. He's actually an incredibly incredibly good hockey mind too, eh? For a pulse, mm -hmm. yeah. I think he's always yes, pulse. yeah. It, yeah. It, anyway, it very well. Like just doesn't want to tell you about it. <laughs> no, there's and there's a lot of so the players that don't like him guys are those the ones who are fringe lazy or sensitive yeah guys yeah. guys that cheat the game you cannot cheat the game and play for john tortorello no you can't no you're not getting away hey, look at, right well, look we had zinger on and zinger had the great torts of stories and he didn't play a lot but he respected him because of his honesty you always know where you stand there's no bs and that's the end of the day, Bob. I don't know about you, but en enough with the mind games and the old school days when guys were like, oh, you walk by the coach and it's like uncomfortable and, and you don't know what the guy's going to say. And Torts yeah. just tells it how it is. And yeah, and I don't know. I like that. I'd rather I would always want to know, too. Yeah, I would. Right? I would always want to know. Yeah. Uh, so back to Zach McEwen, you guys seem surprised. I'm not sure. He didn't have a very good camp. Didn't yeah. he didn't earn his way into the lineup for the first couple? I mean, he played two games so far. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not sure. Like, there was a lot of people that didn't understand giving him a three-year one-way deal. Uh, yeah. And and I Pierre think, gave it to him. I think I'll, I'll give you an example. A guy like Rourke Chartier has come in and carved out a nice role, mm -hmm. and 
that was probably not foreseen him coming in and, and being dependable and like coaches love guys they can trust. So that's, and he's a center and um, Parker Kelly's had a great camp. Um, Ridley Gregg is, 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 and you look at the Castellic, you know, people it's like, who would you take out? Nobody. I'm not going to take anybody out of that lineup. Yeah. Why I, would you? I think the only argument I would have is I think, I think, Castellick did not look great to me in a six to one win. If you're a fourth liner and you don't stand out in any regard, I think that's a problem. Mm-hmm. I don't know that McEwen's the answer because he obviously didn't have a good camp and you cannot reward that. Yeah. I would just say, um, I think that this is a conversation that they're having, and whether he clears or not, this is a conversation where we're saying, Hey, you didn't have a great camp. We don't think that you took the one way for granted, but you need to go down and work like, and you need to show us that this is, you know, a validated one-way contract. I, I'm not privy to the conversation. That's just what my guess would be. Yeah, and just I think because he'll well, go down and get it. Just because he's on waivers, like he's not going to get picked up. So, or exactly, maybe that's just the messaging here, right? Go down there, and we need to see more, and then he'll be back. Yeah, I think that's probably got a lot to do with it. Yeah, you know, I can see that. Yeah. But Castellick last night to me, he made some really good um, plays and he made some really good defensive reads, I thought, last night on picking guys coming up off the wall in different areas. It just felt like when he got the pocket, it stood still a little bit. Did I'm trying to remember, did McEwen fight in preseason? I can't remember. Do you guys remember? Yes. Hmm. Yeah, in Montreal. Okay, yeah, he did, eh? Yeah. I just think that Castellick dropping the gloves with Tom Wilson is going to go a long way. I, I do agree with that, especially in the room for your, for that's your good. teammates. That's yeah. yeah. Six, one win. A lot of, and I'll guarantee that was brought up after the game. I would uh, cast standing up for the team. You can just see it right now. Right. Like he's getting, yeah. that's a great job. You're doing that. Like you're, you're finding a way to do something. Mm-hmm. Maybe you didn't have your best night, but Hey, you dropped the gloves with Tom Wilson. And so, that's what we're saying, right? You... you don't want Brady Kachuk ever doing that. So no, nope. he's game, so did... right? He's game. Yeah. Did you watch the fight? So just before the fight, they're both out there for an extended period. Like I think Tom Wilson's like a buck fifteen, and yeah. Castellick is forty five seconds into a shift. Like they're both kind of gassed. When you see them grab on, Castellick says something to Wilson, and I'm just oh. curious if it's like, "Are you taught? Like, let's just do this, but let's not try and kill ourselves." Or cutting think a deal. about it. <laughs> yes, that's what I was wondering. Yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I don't think I fought enough to ever know that kind of stuff. But he, he but, honestly could say, hey, right shoulder's bad. Like, I've seen a lot of that. Yeah. I've, I've seen guys fight where they go into a fight saying, hey, my right shoulder's bad. Pull on yeah. my left and whatever. I don't, but yeah. I don't know. I, I, I whatever, like was, the yeah. whatever was said, it yeah. didn't really matter because Wilson didn't really let up. Like, he was, he was still he was swinging. Tr- He's trying to hurt him, right? Yeah. It wasn't like he wasn't trying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think when you get into it at that point, you're like, I'm going to make sure I don't get smoked here. Yeah. You kind of exactly. have to. <laughs> it's like yeah. you, people forget, like you're, it's a fight, but you're fighting in front of whatever, 15, 20,000 people. Like you don't want to be embarrassed. No, right. No. Even if it's 10 people <laughs> and it's not, the it's <laughs> like, this isn't fake. It's real. So, uh, okay. We're, we're moving. People are excited. Well, I'm excited to get to our top five comedy. So I want to make sure the move, show moves on. Uh, and now we, we do have a new sponsor I want to tell you about. Uh, it's Wendy's. So starting on Monday, uh, we're doing the when uh, the Daily Faceoff Wendy's Survivor Pool. So at the dailyfaceoff.com, if you go to their webpage, there will be a button at the top along the blue bar. Click on that. There's a Survivor Pool. It goes Monday to Saturday and then on Sunday. Oh. So, <laughs> so today I had... I had the barbecue bacon cheeseburger to give it a shot to see how it is. It's actually pretty good. It's the new menu yeah. item for what? Oh, what a loser. Um, the new menu <laughs> item for uh, Wendy's. So listen, go to the, uh, download the app, download the Wendy's app and download, uh, there'll be a daily face off survivor app. And then you'll get uh, it's daily prizes. And then there's weekly prizes. And at the end of the year, there's like a $5,000 prize. Um, so it's pretty good just to play long. The, the app, it looks pretty cool from what I've seen. So, uh, check that out on Monday, dailyfaceoff.com. Um, it is the Daily Faceoff Wendy's Survivor Pool. And we'd like to welcome Wendy's aboard all season long, gentlemen. Um, yeah. I, 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 they make a pretty good burger. I'm going to tell you right now. They make an excellent chili. Oh, if yeah. I go to, if, oh, I, get, I go with the chili there. 
Little they chubby. make an incredible chicken, spicy chicken sandwich too. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't, Bob. Are you a, a fast food guy? Actually, not really. No, no, a little bit less than people would think based on my body fat percentage every <laughs> camp. <laughs> um, but no, I am. I think that and we talked about this just a second before the show. If I'm in Canada, the number one fast food place for me is going to be Wendy's every time. Yeah. We have a couple Which, extra ones in, in the U.S. So because we're gluttons for yes. punishment down here. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's a fast food place down there. Yeah. 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 But Wendy's yeah. Um, spicy chicken sandwich plain with some barbecue sauce and the French fries are always good too. throw a frosty in. Not a bad, not a bad afternoon. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> if you come up, I'll take you to Wendy's. I'm in. Like I actually haven't had a barbecue bacon burger, so I will do that. I will take it's you brand new. Yeah. Sounds I'm like in. a nice sounds like a nice little Saturday, Bob. That's it. I don't know if we'll have enough time, but that'll lead us into our movie picks. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy's now, and know. Bath and Beyond. A little uh, Wendy's, a little Bed Bath. And yeah. So anyway, go to go, go to Wendy's and try out the barbecue bacon cheeseburger. Okay. Uh, one last thing before we get to the movies, and that's coming up this weekend is the Detroit game. It's the the NHL's leading point score is coming to town um so there it is a one o'clock game so this is uh now we're going to go into our, our lock of the day just to uh talk about this game but um yorkie i'm gonna have mm -hmm. you do the botano read today oh no really yeah <laughs> puppies oh no oh no <laughs> he knows what's coming we may have to refund botano by the end of this no come on i'm a professional years of doing uh, broadcasting <laughs> So, uh, yeah, thanks to Botano, or has uh, been with us since day one. The game starts now. It's Canada's sports betting online website. Some go for some live betting, Some do a little bet builder. <laughs> and uh, let me put my glasses on so I can actually read this, fellas. Would you like me to do it? Well, that's all I can see is the board there, Wally. Okay. Uh, head over and over to Botano.ca. Look, you bet on all the games, money lines, puck lines, um, all the in-game stuff, though, I really enjoy the the parlays that you can do. So, uh, take them, uh, check them out. They also have a, a enhanced odds on all the games, um, and that leads us into our Botano lock of the day. So, right. Detroit's coming to town. They're three and one. They've won three straight games. Uh, Alex DeBrinket looks well, like we thought Alex DeBrinket would look. He's got eight points. Um, they have lost five straight at Ottawa, and by the way. One thing that people don't uh, give Ottawa enough credit for, in the last 20 home games, I think they've won 15 of those games. Mm -hmm. I, they have the third best record dating back to January 25th, I think. They are extremely good right now at home. Mm -hmm. uh, and by the way, Vladimir Tarasenko, he's got, uh, he's got six points. So, Bob, if you were to pick one... How many hits does Alex Debrinket take? And two, who would you pick as the winner? Take? I thought you were going to say give, and I would have said zero. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. No, that's a given. Yeah. yeah never met a corner he liked. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with hits. Let's just say he's out there against Brady five times, six times. So I'm going to say seven or eight, but nothing killer. I don't think guys are going to target him. I think he was. No. I think he was actually liked. Yeah, he was just liked, just didn't See, work I, out. It's the narrative, right? The narrative. So, yeah. in t in the thirty two thoughts podcast with Tim Stutzla and Ale Elliot Friedman, Stutzla says, "Well, if he doesn't want to be here, good luck to him." Something to that effect. Yeah, I don't believe Tim Stutzla meant beat it. I think he literally yeah. meant like, "Hey, good all the best to, to you. Good luck in Detroit. We'll talk to you soon." I actually, uh, I I feel the same way. So I don't think anybody's running to bring it out of the building by any means. Um, so muck of the day is five hits against, and <laughs> dude, I think the boys are rolling at home right now. I think they're going to win again. I really do. I like right. the, I, I just, you don't change the lineup at all. You roll it right back. There's no trap game. Cause they had a couple days off and DJ's probably into them by Friday to, you know, tomorrow for a really hard practice. I, especially with no pregame skate, right? Yorkie, it's a noon game or whatever, or yep. one o'clock. Who's your goalie? Forsberg yes. has to run back. You have to run for Really? Back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, the only reason I say that is because you normally don't want your goalies to sit long, right? Yeah. No, and it so, doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. 
a six yep. to one W and the fact that it wasn't actually three, two, um, going the other way was because of him. I thought in the first period, he made some really good saves. He's looked really they, good. Yeah. When they were hemmed a few times and he's becoming one, not one a or one B he's becoming one. Um, so you hope that continues, but I'm taking the sends to, uh, uh, on Saturday and they're my winner. Winner, 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 say? chicken dinner. Yeah. The sends are, I do Spicy like how chicken Detroit, dinner, by the way, I, 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 I do like how Detroit's playing right now. Uh, I was listening to Dylan Larkin uh, talk about it. Uh, he did his post game interview. Uh, they stay on top of you. He was asking why Detroit's having success right now. They really stay on top of you and they reload through the middle. So they're a tough team to play against and they're not cheating the game. I'll, I'll always say this when you get a bunch of guys that aren't cheating, it increases your odds of winning so much. So it's going to be a tough game for Ottawa, but I just, I'm with Bob. They're, they're rolling. They're oh, confident. They're getting goalie goaltending. Shabbat just had his best game of the year. I don't see any reason why this team has a, let, a letdown, and I don't think it matters what goal he plays. I think they're going to go to Corpus Allo. I think they're just going to keep switching it up, uh, and Corpus Allo was good his last game, mm -hmm. so I will disagree on that. Yeah. Um, and Forrest Briggs has been outstanding, but I don't, I don't think the Cat's going to get touched. I'm of the opinion that this guy was – and this is just my intuition. He's just a guy that showed up, probably didn't talk much in the room, was a good teammate, a good guy. Uh, listen, Brady, Brady, he went and played in that charity fundraiser for Bob Jones in, Win in, in Windsor, Ontario. So mm -hmm. if he wasn't a good guy, he wouldn't have went to that. He was at and Brady's that, wedding. He's at Brady's wedding. Like there's yeah. no, and listen, the NHL, I'll give you a great example. I played in a charity tournament uh, on the weekend. Doug Gilmore was there. And we we're talking about um, back in a locker back in 1994. Doug came into our dressing room before the game, Bob. And this is 1994. He's like, guys, we all know we're getting locked out. So tonight we're going on the ice. And after the game on Maple Leaf Gardens, we're going to shake hands. No one's going to do any bullshit on the ice tonight. And then first shift, <laughs> killer goes out and spears somebody and it's game <laughs> on. <laughs> but we're just talking about how guys hated each other back then. Like, like it was just, it was a different era. And guys, there's not, there's not that hate in the game anymore. Yeah. Like even when you hear a guy like Ryan Reeves talk about it, he's just doing that for his brand. And to, that's yes. what he is. Like, he yes. doesn't really hate anybody. It's all bullshit. Um, so long story short, I don't think the cat gets touched. He doesn't like this guy swoops in and out of the corners. It's so hard to hit him. Um, he he does, never stops on pucks. Like he's, he's not going to get touched. Okay, um, you're probably right. Yeah. Does Alex DeBrink get, get a hit? Uh, sorry. Does he get a point? For sure. Yeah. He does. He yeah, loves okay. his cook. He's a cookie monster. He's going to get, they get one or two on the power play. He's going to have a career year this year in Detroit, man. I'm telling you, he's, He's, I was going to uh, say yes for different reasons because he's playing pretty good hockey, but let's call him that too. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think he does. A, yeah. He is a cookie monster, man. Yeah. He's a he is a he's a professional guy at at putting up points, man. On, yeah. on teams, mm -hmm. on teams when expectations are low, uh, and he's really good at it, and he's got great hockey sense. So he's not getting hit. Take Ottawa for the win, and uh, he's a good guy. The players like him. You no, know, he's got he's got a little micro barrel to him in that sense. Like you can micro barrel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Man, Always put up points. Always put up points. Yeah. But his team was never great, and it was like I think you know it was the late Brian Murray that said that to me one time about micro barrel. He's like he's a guy that can get you there. You just can't win with him. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. that's we used to have this guy uh, when Columbus. Uh, this guy's before your time, David Verborny. I remember that name. He was on uh, like NHL he was, 90, whatever. Yeah. He was on Columbus. He made a lot of money and he just got points on a bad team because somebody has to get the points on a bad team and make the money because that's how the league works. But he's like, that's your David Vaborn. He's just there. He gets his points, doesn't play in the playoffs. And I'm not saying Dibrink it's that. Like, that's a little bit of an exaggeration. Like, Dibrink it's a right. better player than Vaborn. But there are guys in the league that are professional point getters and they just they don't win it's just that's, that's the way it is david verborny played 543 games had 113 yep. goals 317 points made a lot oh, of money right. made a lot never of money. played a playoff game 
David oh, wow. Borney. It's the David Borney rule. Uh, all right. So I'm going to pick Ottawa as well. And I, I think they might be able to contain Alex Debrinkit. I think this team is they actually... The board. They, so they just held Ovi without a shot on goal. By the way, uh, oh. for those who don't know, back-to-back games without shot on goal for Ovi is the first yeah. time it's ever happened in his career. I, I just think that they are so jacked to play better defensive yeah. hockey that they're actually... It's a it's now a goal. It's now a goal of we're shutting down people. I they agree with that. Puck. They have the puck all it's, it's well that's just play, it, right? You play better defense when you have the puck in the ozone more often. Yeah. All right. Hey, uh, uh, we got, hey but we gotta t- Bob, what do you th- Ovi? What do you think about Ovi? Like the last oh, couple of games. Like is he is he gonna is he gonna get this record? No, because he looked like he was just just out for a twirl. <laughs> like we, and um, I don't think so, man. I don't, he's got to what have 38 a year for the next three years. What's the is math? That, Wally, you, what's the math? I don't, he's I don't I have, it like, wasn't in my nerd report. Okay. Yeah, 70, he's 72 scary. away. So thank you, Gavin. So 30, 30 and man, it's hard to say. He looked, he looked absolutely uninterested at times last night. Didn't he? <laughs> so, so here's, I think they're going to have to do changes in Washington soon. Yeah. And then we'll see if that makes an impact on how he plays. Like, think about this Capitals whole existence now is just to get Ovi the record. Yeah. Like, that's pretty well what they're doing. That is they're it. about to trade for Shane Pinto. Come on. <laughs> I was like, wait a second. <laughs> Shane, nobody told me we had breaking news today. But, um, uh, yeah, so I would agree with that. I don't, that power play is about all they got going for him right now. And it, that didn't look good either. So, um, you know what? I think he gets it. If it's three years and it's just, he averaged 50 for so many years and he only needs 30 a year for a couple. He'll find a way. Yeah. yeah. Not if that team is down five to one all the time after two periods. I, I would agree with well, that. Well, maybe not. Maybe then they just open it up and he starts getting yeah. a bunch of, yeah, 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 maybe you might be right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, it's time for the coming in hot top five comedies. Now, you can label them however you want. Your top five comedies of all time. I I I label them mine. Oh wait a second. What's going Gavin? on here? I I label mine as uh, if they were on TV, I would stop and watch them. So I and I didn't even know if I had five. I didn't know mm-hmm. if like Shawshank Redemption was considered a comedy or not. I, I gotta go with no on that one. <laughs> but I'll watch it every. I will watch it every time because Tim Robbins was fantastic. Uh, all right, uh, Gavin. Here we go. Here are the uh, the coming in hot top five comedies. Uh, Jason York, you can read yours if you'd like. I want. I see. I wanted to make a last minute change again, but the problem is there's too many good comedies right now. For me, Hall Pass is my unquestioned number one. Uh, just that. That movie, every time it's on, to, to your point, I have to watch it. So many good parts. If anybody hasn't seen that movie, do yourself a favor. Watch it. You will laugh out loud. The legend of Ron Burgundy, Anchorman. Like I just, uh, one of the best comedies. Wedding Crashers, you motorboat and son of a gun, you, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> Where is she? She's still in the house? Uh... <laughs> That's so good. And then I wasn't going to put old school in, but there's just so many moments in that movie that are just uh, phenomenal. Love. Uh, seems to be a trend here. A lot of Will Ferrell, who uh, who had a great part time role in Wedding Crashers, by the way, as the uh, funeral crasher. Chaz. Ma, get the meatloaf. Damn it. I know she hears me up there. Oh, oh, um, and then put meet the parents. We talked about this the other day. I, it, it's a comedy, but it's also got a little good story. Too. Love Meet the Parents. I don't know how you don't but have airplanes on there. I or, know. Sorry, planes, I, trains, and automobile. I, I wanted say, to put planes, trains just because Wally is <laughs> Neil Page from Planes, Trains. and all. That is you to a T. And that's got, uh, uh, there's just so much. I wanted to put Bull Durham in there, but is Bull Durham really a comedy oh. or a sports movie? Like Bull Durham. I like there's so many good lines in that one as well. Major League. We can go on and on. But I, anyhow, that's my top five. How good is Bull Durham when he says he hit the fucking cow or whatever? <laughs> it's like you knew what I was going to throw. <laughs> that is a good one. 
Um, I can't actually, I, I knew that a few of ours were going to overlap between the three of us. Uh, I think I'm most impressed in my, my list is wedding crashers. I think it's the most what, or excuse me, the most quotable movie of all time. Yes. Um, the quail scene no when they're out hunting. Um, <laughs> I think old school is incredible when they're going through the gauntlet of trying to, you know, make themselves accredited. Dumb and Dumber, just a classic. And you know what is a classic from? It's like that was most popular when I was on buses in Owen Sound. Yeah. Um, for me, so I watched that one a lot. Hall Pass. I can't believe it didn't make your list. Well, I think that Jason Sudeikis <laughs> and Owen Wilson are right. Um, I I think it's probably two of the best movies they've ever done on their own. And then they did it together. And you know what else almost made my list was horrible bosses with Jason Sudeikis. I thought he was Great incredible. Movie. Yeah. But the here's where, and I texted Wally after the fact and said, I have to pull something out because I have to put hangover in because I cannot remember ever going to a movie and laughing that hard in a theater. Um, it's, yeah. it's a good movie. That was the hardest I ever laughed in a movie theater, watching a movie for the first time. And uh, the, one of the other ones was Hall Path of Wedding Crashers. Th this yeah. may come as a surprise to both of you. I've never seen Hall Pass. Well, so I can't put it on my list. Get, get, there's your homework. Yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> we want that watch this weekend. And, and, and by the way, there's no more quotable movie than Anchorman. It is the most quotable movie that I can think of. I think so, it's, that's, it's a fair statement. Yeah. It's a fair it, uh, statement. Man. But in Talladega Nights is just funny. I just I'm I do like oh. Will So yeah. um it's pretty good. And then I go with the hangover and elf. Elf doesn't get enough attention. Elf is hilariously funny. It's not a Christmas movie, it's a comedy. And I completely then, uh, forgot about that. Yeah, I agree with that. Yeah, it's I I the the scene every time he jumps into the Christmas tree, I watch, I will laugh every time. He <laughs> goes from the couch into the tree. Uh and then uh, I think Mike Myers, I was either going to do Austin Powers or Wall, uh, Wayne's World. Yeah. Went Wayne's with Austin World. Powers. You went the right way on that one. Yeah. I still, yeah. still want to do my March Madness bracket. You guys yeah. just tell me when you want all 64 teams. <laughs> the, 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 thing, the thing with Wayne's World, though, Wally, it, yeah. I don't find the humor has stood the test of time. Like some humor, just like, like the jokes aren't as funny anymore. Even Austin, I loved Austin Powers back in the day, but even that, like, it's not as funny. I'll say under the radar, Mike Myers movie. So I married an axe murderer. You seen that one, Bob? I have not. No. Watch it. I watch it. I guarantee you'll like it. It's got I, some uh, great, great, great lines. I now, actually have always had a tough time with Mike Myers. Not a huge fan. I think he was phenomenal in Austin Powers, but I think he just overdoes it for me. But so does Will. I don't know. I think he overdoes it for me sometimes. Will, yes. So if Will has the right cast, like an anchorman, he's got all these cameos from people. Uh, I think that's what makes it. Same with The Hangover. It's the cameos that always makes the, yeah. I think, the comedy really good. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting. Like none of us picked Slapshot, which is the it's, yeah, I know. the cult I know. movie of all time. But I watched it when I rent. So rented it at the movie store uh, on VHS. I think I was six or seven. It was way too old for me at six or seven. Yeah, yeah. I you just know, like uh, all it was was constant f bombs. I'm like ah. <laughs> yeah, ah. I know. Speaking of Will Ferrell, though, do you know what's an under the radar Will Ferrell comedy? Is semi pro. Yeah. Oh yeah. Right? Love me. I sexy. remember. <laughs> I remember seeing that with, uh, gosh, Brett Festerling and a couple other guys. We were on the road in Carolina. We had a day off, so we went to see it. And I remember we out, we actually laughed our way outside the when he takes the lap for the corn dogs because he doesn't have any it's one of the messy i remember almost pissing my pants but um and gavin just threw out two super bad was on my original five i took yes, it out all that um yeah. i love and 40 year old virgin i don't kind of stands the test of time too i'm shocked I, you didn't have i'm shocked you didn't have Step Brothers on your list that, see that was one of the ones that i thought john c Riley and will ferrell went to just too much <laughs> it was too much for yes. me yeah yeah. Same. Uh, I'm not a big Steve Carell fan, so I didn't like 40 year old version as much. What? That's fair. No, it's fair. Everybody's Just, got their guys. The yes, next, next my... thing, next thing you're going to tell me you don't like The Office. I've never seen The Office. Oh, I've watched like two episodes. Hate it. I can't it. do it. Yeah, I give it, do some, it. give it some time. You got to let it marinate for a bit. You got to let it marinate, and it gets better and better. I, I no, I'm too 
I'm too serious. Yeah. Well, I mean, to know that. We know that. Yeah. <laughs> you, got uh, Austin, you got Austin Powers kind of humor. Well, you yeah. know what? I just I had four movies, and then I just kind of ran out, and I just stuck one on there. Started googling funny movies. Oh man! All right. I'm putting 64 together. Our fans need it. <laughs> hey, another yeah. another another really good old school movie back in the day. 16 Candles. I've never, never seen, seen that it. either. Yeah. Oh, What's the, I was going to do Breakfast Club. Six Great movie. Can't, is that a 16? comedy though? Uh, it's yeah. It's, Sixteen Candles has a character in their movie. It's an Asian guy, and again, people this wouldn't translate to today's society. The guy's name is Long Duck Dong. <laughs> the amount of movies that aren't allowed that we watch today is incredible oh, you know God. what's funny i woke up to a text message from ryan dezingle this morning and it was Step Brothers bloopers <laughs> i gotta send oh, it to you guys this is uh, this is what this guy and i do all day long <laughs> send it to me so uh people want to know why there's no love for adam sandler i know and i will I like go it. first he's funny it's just the, it's just the same nonsense to me all the time Agreed. Yeah. I that's the same the way I feel about Jim Carrey. Um, yes. Like I I thought about maybe not the cable guy, but liar liar, and I just I can't deal with that kind of humor. Um, I think if I was going to pick a Adam Sandler movie, Big Daddy would be the one. Mm -hmm. Um, but mm -hmm. I I I I laugh out loud at his movies, but I don't think they stand into my. They're not going to make your top no. five. Yeah, I no. had. I did enjoy, listen, if Happy Gilmore is on TV and I'm bored, I'll watch it. Mm -hmm. I did really enjoy Mr. Deeds. Mr. Deeds was, was just good. stupid was funny. Yeah. And the way he'll always, he'll always find a way to get Steve Buscemi in his movies. <laughs> and the other guy, guys. there's one other guy too, but yeah. Uh, and yeah. I'll get, and listen, Billy Madison has a special place in my heart too. Where he keeps leaving the bag of poop on the guy's door, and the old guy comes out with the boots on. He's like, "What is it? It's poop." See, now <laughs> I, I was gonna put Fletch on because I oh, I did Fletch. like, yeah. I thought, um, oh, now I can't think of his name. Who's the who's the Chevy main Chase? actor? Chevy yes. Chase, Steve Martin. Yes, and so he does the lampoon stuff as well, right? Like he was at the time. Vaca vac vac Christmas vacation is brilliant. Vacation is yeah. really good too. Uh, yeah, so I've was, never seen either one of those, and um, you'll like them both. I can't. I'm always with Lindsay and her family, and they. This is like this big, weird thing that goes back 20 years that I don't know anything about. So they start movie quoting to each other, and I think that they're just being weird and silly, but they're actually saying lines from this movie. So I have to watch this um, sometime next week, so I actually I, understand coming into the holiday season what anybody's actually talking about. So the funny part about all this, Bob, is you drove your motor home and parked it at uh, Clark MacArthur's house, whose nickname is Grizz, yep. or Griswold, and you haven't watched the movie. It's basically you enacted the scene and I have no idea about any of it. Wait, he actually came out and saw me like looking to play like I was trying to plug in so I could run the gray water and things like that to his house. He goes, I can't shitters full. And I still had no clue what he meant. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, uh, Christmas vacation's awesome. All right. It's, it's really on my good. list. Yeah. I, like, I can't believe you haven't seen <laughs> after oh, all no. of that, you haven't seen the movie. All right. Anyway. I'm making my top 64 right now, guys. It's coming to you uh, for board next week on Monday or Tuesday. Let's, let's well, Monday, we have Colby Armstrong on the show. Okay. Thursday, oh, we have Dave Poulin lined up. And Tuesday, I'm working on bringing in someone from Buffalo to talk about the Sabres. Although, you might need Craig Anderson, Bob. He just uh, got what? hired. Yeah, I just saw. Well, I knew that. I knew he was going to take that job. But um, I can give Andy a call for Tuesday. See what he's got to say about the Buffalo Sabres. Mm -hmm. He, he's a big Meet the Parents fan, so that's going to make the list, too. Um, <laughs> but all right. I'm we can on talk it. About, yeah. We'll ask his top five comedies. Uh, all right, boys. Enjoy the weekend. Guys, en enjoy the games. Uh, we will see you Monday, 3 p.m. with our good friend, Colby Armstrong. Uh, see you guys. Thanks for watching. See you guys. Coming in hot is brought to you by Botano.ca. Please hit that like button and subscribe to our channel to never miss an episode.